Time to go explodey. Well, your video is working. Well, good. So, one of the reasons I built the videos, right, is to is to cover up this gap, right, where we have to load in and ram and then reposition and change the camera and blah blah blah. Because I just it's sloppy and I hate it. So, I was trying to <laughs> add a little bit of showmanship there. Well, and I know showmanship is your middle name, right? <laughs> well, no, but I like—I would like it to be. Um, all right, so here we go. Obviously, the team lineups haven't changed. We'll give you a quick look at those again one more time. Both teams going triple Zhao Minotaur and opting for a Wooster. Uh, sorry, one one Wooster and one Des Moines. Yeah, and then difference two: two Yamatos on TNG versus Yamato Montana on uh, on the RQ. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out, I was just about to point this out when we had to kind of reset and crash the last game. Payad's Minotaur looked like he was trying to shove his way into the B cap. Almost, very, very similarly to what we see people try to do, we've seen other teams try to do or successfully do with Minotaurs on um, Tears of the Desert. Now, Payad well, is smoking. So Payad has smoked Minotaur, which I find interesting. And while you're talking about that, Cowboy is doing the exact same thing, although he got spotted by those fighters. Simpax probably should have smoked him in, but he didn't. And so now Cowboy has to do some evasive maneuvers there. Nice dodging so far. He took zero uh, hits as uh, now Simpax's Grozovoy got hit or lit up, one of the two, by uh, Sav Hero coming in and uh, fighting off those planes. Oh, oh wow. What? what? Whoa! What? what? Okay. Um. Uh. First blood. This was two minutes. About two minutes. <laughs> Why are they asking about a reset? <laughs> damn. Oh damn! That's just cold. That's that just is. cold. Murph Daddy going not... down. So I'll, I'll, let's let's take a step back here. I was about to comment on RQL strategy. Right? They've gone. Heavy, heavy A push, sending only a Montana and a Zhao over to C. And I think we're going to see more of this as we uh, as we get deeper into the event, right? I think, I think, I my theory is that a lot of the more competitive teams are not going to waste a tremendous amount of resources on the C cap on this on this particular yep. map. Yeah, we mentioned that last week at the stream about how most at most we'll see two ships, maybe a third, and we see that here with T. Right. Well, yes, but I mean, what it deny last week shoved a whole big force through C and it almost worked for them. Like if they hadn't been maybe so hyper aggressive with their carrier, it might have worked. Yeah. Meanwhile, the the uh, A gets capped. So even though that Zalv is gone, uh, at least the Grozovoy there, Rock T, was able to do what he Paladin coming under some uh, fire here, torpedo bombers threatening him. So now, Although, go ahead. Where is Sinpax? Where did he run off to? He's between B and C right now. He's on his way to C. I figured he was going to C. Because the other Grozovoy, Rock T, is literally just... Okay, he's finally turned his engines on. He's still on the top end of A. And if I... I mean... His ability to cap B is severely limited by Cowboy's position in that Minotaur, right? At the same time... If he were to work the north side of that same island that Cowboy is on, he would have decent cover, and he's got a Yamato backing him up. It might be worth trying, but um, RQL not interested in that right now. Uh, Paladin is coming under some serious fire right now as he was forced to turn away through... Um, Wooster and Groves were spotted for just a sec. I was hoping to see a little bit of a shot from him, but I don't think he was able to get his turrets in on time. Probably need a little bit more WD-40. Paya just blew his smoke at the top, uh, way up north in between B and C at the top end of that little picket line of islands and then just sailed right out of it. Not, yep. not sure what that's all about. I think this is a miscommunication on their team. They were probably trying to set the Zhao and Wooster up in that smoke. Um, but then momentarily, I think what happened is Cowboy blew his radar and he was able to detect in that smoke uh, with both the Wooster and the Grozovoy for just a, a little bit. Just long enough to convince both of them to say this smoke is not. 
RQL now down to ship and to cap here with five minutes gone on Islands of Ice. It's very... They're going to have a really tough time where they're at right now. Their Grozovoy is on the one line. On the uh, on what? the wrong... Yeah, he's on the wrong side of the only cap they own. And honestly, there's there's no reason for, for TNG to do much about it. They should they could just let him have it. Um, Rock T is now finally moving back onto the two line. The top end of A. It looks like he's going to try and get over here and, and get some cap work done. But... I, I'm not a fan of his positioning. I think he's just he swung way too wide, uh, way over there on the A cap. Cowboy is in a pretty precarious position here. There's shots coming into him from the Montana, possibly Minotaurs, and also from the uh, the side he's getting flanked, and he's gonna have to make a decision very soon. Am I gonna sit here and take a bunch of shots for a long distance of time, or duration of time, or am I just gonna try getting out? Looks like he's going to try getting out now. He's at about half. He's got to do something here because he's just going to get pelted. Indeed, I saw he was taking some decent shells there from the Minotaur. He moved up. He's not spotted now. We don't have eyes on him. We're about to get eyes on him. Those Torb Bombers are coming in. They smell blue. Oh, yep. He's turning out now. He's spotted. Don't think the Minotaur, the sorry, the Montana up north has got another long range shot on him. And see, now by pushing Cowboy out, they have the opportunity to rotate the destroyer back into B and at least contest it, if not cap it outright. Cowboy probably gonna eat some of these torps. I don't think it's gonna be enough to take him off the board, but he's definitely gonna be hurting. Yeah, engage superhero. Indeed. Prints himself a new ship under 10k. RQL really needs to keep up the pressure. They need this kill. And he's gone. They've lost him. No eyes. Yeah, but we still have a few more oh. seconds of shots coming. They spotted him now, and now the Yamato's got shells on him. Here they come. This is all she wrote. Nope. Japanese dispersion trolls him, but Cowboy is on fire. He'll probably burn out. That's a big strategic play for RQL. Just pushing him out of the way is a is a big is a big win for them. But if they actually bag this kill and they're about to, there he goes. That's points they badly yeah. needed. Is now they that opens up B. Is now the Zhao and the Montana on the AB line are able to kite the way this strategy was laid out. Go ahead. The uh, the big problem is Paladin was forced to retreat, and because he retreated, both Llama and Jelly Donut and the Zhao's also pulled back. So really, Cowboy didn't have that much in the way of protection. Uh, Jelly Donut now opening up, letting his presence be known, but that's just going to allow the enemy to know where he is and start shooting him. He's not going to get much out of that. Indeed, ZHS is Yamato now moving into the extreme northwestern corner of the B cap. He will be the first RQL to set foot on it, although the Grozovoy is hot on his heels and is about to cross over in front of his bow. Now, there are some torps coming in on ZHS, but it looks like those are yes. going to miss. I was just going to ask if those have been spotted, because as soon as you mentioned the Grozovoy really cutting across his bow, I'm thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> yep, there's a couple of them spotted. Now, Rock T is smoking up ZHS. You don't normally see people smoke battleships anymore. That's going to require ZHS to have some fire discipline in there and not fire his main battery. Let's yeah. see what he does. Uh, and Pyad's over there, too, with a Minotaur. So Pi Pyad's yep. coming in. Pyad He'll probably end up... I think what they're doing is they're trying to put him in place as a no-fly zone so that the carrier can't drop on him at all. Well, we'll see. Well, we got Jelly Donut here who is trying to help prevent Paladin from taking some torpedo. Nine minutes gone as RQL bags their second cap. That'll start to narrow the gap a little bit here. Both teams down one ship. A very hard-fought game here on Islands of Ice. Despite RQL's oh, early... Whoa. A ah, Torpedos. in the A-cap. Yep, they left him behind and the Zhao got some torps. That really... Now, see, now we're seeing kind of the opposite. All of that RQL force that was at A earlier all turned and went to B. They left the Wooster behind by himself and now he's out. So now they're so, going to have to redeploy. Interesting consideration. So Llama is all the way on the one line. Obviously, he's going to just haul ass for a right that makes sense yep the hakuryu was spotted up in b2 last so yes sir the big question is going to be is llama going to go for the carrier now and flank around my thought would be he'd go into the to f2 get behind the island get the safe cap move up to e2 behind that island 
and then move up to, to C2 behind that island. I well, mean, talk about a perfect spot for Zhao. It is, and it's pretty obvious right now that the Hakuryu's not really paying much attention to the board because his engines aren't even on. He's parked in B2 just sitting there. Meanwhile, um, Goliath now is coming under some sustained fire from Sinpax and the Grozer. Well, and you know, we oh. joked, we joked, we joked about a C push, and yet here TNG is doing it. Ooh, sink stuff goes down there. RQL stuff has been sunk. Indeed, RQL matching the matching the kill on the Wooster with a kill of their own. Now Goliath's about to eat at least one of these torps, maybe two. He's going to take one on the belt and dodge the one up by the bow. There's our torps. Now that hurt, but it could have been a lot worse. He is going to live, and he's trying to cut the angle to keep the Groves away from getting shells on him. And a torp angle too. Now this is this is crucial because the Des Moines is in position to back up Simpa. Obviously, against the Montana, he that's not an engagement he wants. RQL now only 50 points behind, a little over the halfway mark of the match, as they are trying to find a way to victory. There we go. One of the Zows finally into A here. I keep waiting for this Akuryu. There we go. Yeah, he Akuryu's just he literally now. just turned his engines on. Mobius Legacy's engines have just come on. He's realized finally the position he's in. As Blix Prime's Yamato is also under a lot of pressure here. He's flooding, I think. He took two torps a minute ago. He has to be flooding. Yes, he is flooding. He He's is flooding, flooding in under fire and, and burning. burning. He may be the next kill. He will be. Question is, will he take ZHS down with him? Concentrate fire on the designated target. And he does. He does indeed. We trade Yamato's here. <laughs> As TNG will bag A on the strength of on the strength of some, I would almost call it a positioning mistake by RQL, allowing TNG to just hop up there, leave, you know, leaving a single Wooster behind is tough. Yep. Now, interesting to note that uh, TNG is down a ship at this point, but we've got a Zao that's at less than half, a Montana that's struggling, another Zao that's pretty low, Stations versus a Des Moines here. The Des Moines target. is pretty well. Um, ducked into this this island, so it's just a one on one right now, which is the, the what he. So, we're kind of left now. What's what this is about to evolve into an east west fight, right? Because Paul Paul's Des Moines over here in, in C is the last surviving. Well, no, the Groza boys over there somewhere. But yep. you've got three ships capable of pushing Paul off the board. He's about to get flanked by Duke Zhao. He's got a Goliath. He's got Goliath and Nimitz in his face. He's, I mean, he's got nowhere to go. He's going to yeah, die this eventually. Is a, this is a positioning mistake on a couple of uh, accounts for TNG. One is Simpac should be heading the other way and keeping the Zao spotted for his Des Moines buddy. And two, both of the Zao's went into ACAP when really only one needed. Here come torpedoes from the Grozevoy. It's going to probably hit one on Paul's bow. Nope, Paul is going to dodge no nope. as the zell comes around saying gimme 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 duke duke now forcing the issue here as he comes around the edge of the island he has both Sinpax and paul spotted still yeah, a close game here now this is very bad for Sinpax. he's off the board and paul will probably join him momentarily that frees duke to push up here come the torps oh Sinpax is gonna bag duke on his way out yep duke's gonna eat two and he's gonna die and this is this is huge now uh, Paul needs to push forward and hit that Zhao and get him off the board before Goliath comes into it and sits him in the face. Like that. And Just like that. It. Just like that. Just like A little like too that. cautious by the Des Moines there, costing him his luck. Well, and possibly the game, but Mobius oh, is going down. Mobius is out. We talked about this like seven minutes ago that he was all not paying attention to the board, all caught off by himself, should have been moving west, <laughs> sorry, east already, and it's going to cost him his ship. Very bizarro game because now what's going to happen is without their carrier, RQL is going to struggle to know where those Zows actually are. The Minotaur outspots them, but he is also running east. Yeah, um, but the, the key though is that the, the Zows are really out of position to help the seaside. They're going to be forced to go into B. What we're going to see happen here is a showdown in B cap. Now, TNG is going to win in 1 minute and 30 seconds if nothing changes. But That's we know not... the Montana's going to get on to C. Right. We, Nimitz steps on to C. That's going to halt those points. And when that's done capping, we'll flip the other way. Now, it, the trick is that RQL has a, a, sorry, TNG has a larger margin for error because they're continuing to gain points. They're about to cross the 900 point mark. I don't think that RQL can catch them in time. Not on points alone. I, don't think I think so. they have to have a kill. 
I don't think so either. Um, but the key here is that uh, Saphiro is realizing he needs to... Um, so the question is going to be, if that Grozovoy spots him as he pushes south, uh, that's going to be a problem. Meanwhile, I don't see any planes at all, at all, in the air right now. Goodness. So even though they've got a carrier left, well, that carrier's got nothing left. So my timers tell me this. RQL wins in 2 minutes and 18 seconds, and TNG wins in 2 minutes and 3 seconds. That's how yeah. close that's how close this game is. They're, these teams are 12 seconds apart. That means that RQL must bag a kill or step on A. If they can get a ship on A, even for just 10 seconds, that might be enough. But they're so far behind. I don't think that there's a ship capable of getting on A at this point. No, I don't think they can get to A. What they need to do is they need to risk the Minotaur. They've got to stick him out there to spot one of these owls and let the battleship shells do their work. But uh, Pyat is not in a good position. He pulled too far to the east. He's still... I'm still not sure what he's doing here. In my mind, he needs to get his bow turned around. He needs to be going west because without the carrier, they've got to spot these owls. That's they're just wait, they're just they're just wasting time. This is time they don't have to lose. Meanwhile, Donut and Llama both know what's happening, so they are throwing torpedoes in where they think the Minotaur might. So if if they are lucky, they'll they'll get a quick torpid on the Minotaur, discourage him from from pushing in and stuff like that. Oh, there's the Montana. Okay, Llama's been spotted, probably by the Grozovoy. No, no, no one's no. been spotted. We have eyes okay. on no one. Yeah. They're firing blindly. Yeah. Wow. RQL has 45 seconds to get eyes on one of these Zows and get it off the board. Are those Zows, are they running west? Are they still coming this way? Uh, no, they're both in kiting position. Although I don't like Jelly Donut Spot because he is literally right in front of an island right now. So he's got nowhere to turn. Should he get... Oh, now he can turn. Pyatt has okay. finally turned around and headed west, but it's going to be too little too late. He's about a minute later than he should have done this. This game is over in 20 seconds now. RQL yeah. is going to drop game two and the match. And they had a chance, well, Seth. They had a chance. They had several chances. 12 seconds, 13 seconds between. Yeah. Both, uh, that, that's, that's the margin. That's I mean, the margin. That's exactly the margin. RQL comes in. Everybody comes in with the GG here as the game ends. And TNG sweeps RQL out of the first elimination round here in King of the C7. I wonder if they had the mod that told them how much time was left. I, I'm willing to bet that a number of players didn't. And then they started trying to run the numbers. Do we get this? Do we have it? I don't know, they maybe. they probably had somebody say And, oh boy, I'll tell you what, I've played enough clan battles where we lost by one tick and, oh, that irritates me so much. So that mod be, is so helpful. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm a big I'm a big fan of that mod, trust me. Big fan. Wow. Sav coming in, doing work with the plane kills this time around as you would expect, considering that a lot of the anti-air has been taken off the board. Uh, and then the enemy team here with RQL, their Minotaur doing work on plane kills. But, mm, I don't know. That's about all we can say. Yeah, tough loss for these guys. I mean, uh, they they played this game. There was a lot, there were mistakes on both sides in this game, right? Um, and uh, But RQL had a chance to come back because I think TNG got a little too, too, little too aggressive at sea. I think they, but it's just, they probably didn't anticipate RQL dragging their entire force west to east across what amounted to the D line and just counter pushing over there at sea. In the end, that didn't work for them. But then the loss of their carrier, the carrier's inattention, right? And the fact that he didn't turn his engines on and get haul butt back east when everybody south of him was dead cost them, cost them huge.